Am I audible?
So we see the improvement in the scaling. Here the lesions have almost disappeared. And here also we see the lesions have started resolving. And this is four weeks after the treatment. The fluid is practically free and lesions in the leg and the dorsum of the leg, excepting the two little patches which are hyperpigmented, and in the dorsum of the hand, the others are dissolving. Now, how do we diagnose pelligra? Uh, As I said, it is primarily clinical, and with rising incidence of alcoholism, anybody especially men who present with hyperpigmented lesions on their face, the forehead and the dorsum of the hand, should be given a course of B-complex to rule out pelligra and we have to watch for improvement. And what are the clinical signs of pelligra? All of us knew as undergraduate students the four Ds of pelligra. One is diarrhea, second is dermatitis. The dermatitis is seen on the photosensitive areas in the forehead, in the butterfly area of the face, in the dorsum of the hands and the dorsum of the feet. And third is dementia, fourth is death. Death is due to multi-organ failure. The psychiatric manifestations of pelligra are one is listlessness, lethargy, and patient has got no, feels that there is no purpose in life whatsoever and uh, depression. The depression is mainly because of an increase in the serotonin levels in pelligra. <coughs> we go to the next patient. This is a young man who came with erythematous lesions practically involving the whole back. The history was that this patient had a patch like this on the flank which was treated with a combination of an antifungal and a steroid. So what happened was there was an initial improvement but the lesion started spreading. So this is called as tinea incognito. Tinea, we all know, is a fungal infection. Incognito means hidden. So this is a hidden fungal infection. So a patch of fungus over which a steroid is applied initially responds by having reduced inflammation, reduced erythema, and the itching also gets better. But under cover of the steroid, the fungus will start spreading. And the patient discovers to his dismay that new patches appear in front of places, although the itching is a lot less. And with increasing use of uh, the calcineurin inhibitors, acrolimus and pimacrolimus, we also get tinea incognito due to the calcineurin inhibitors application. The first patient of a tinea due to incognito due to calcineurin inhibitor inhibition was presented in the journal Cutis and we should all take pride that the lead author of the paper was an Indian. His name is N. Timaya. So after having made a diagnosis of tinea incognito, we need to stop the topical steroids, apply local antifungals, and if need be, oral antifungals as well. So with that I finish. Thank you. What is it? Is it calcium in Yeah, that is tacrolimus and pimacrolimus. So we now use uh, both of them for a number of skin conditions. That will cause Yes. So the, actually the original definition of tinea incognito was uh, steroid modified tinea. That was actually the name given in 1965 by two uh, people, Ivy and Marx. But now we have using a lot of uh, topical calcineurin inhibitors. So we get to the end because we told you them also. That's the very recent paper. We have more than
No, sir, it's in a topic lab. Yeah, yeah, not, not the overlap. I request Dr. Lakshmanamurthy to hand out a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Peace.